Legend of Total War here with part 8 of my Empire Total War Blitz campaign as Great Britain. So I've moved everything into position, so we're right ready to move on to next turn. We've put this guy in the port to um, recover. Um, we've... We're taxing everything. Yep. We've got ourselves a new minister here who will um, provide us with uh, more public order. So if you ever look at the base public order here... I don't know if you knew what it was before, but it was um, it was like minus eight, so it's definitely improved. Over here, we've um, we've moved this guy down towards here. He won't get attacked from the spot here um, by the Huron Wyandot. We'd be able to take this settlement next turn because their army will be basically standing here, and um, that army will then disappear. So. The only thing that we need to do now is, I guess, get a good roll of luck during the end turn. So, what we'll do here, it might take us a few tries to get a good roll of luck. Um, just end the video, uh, not the end of the video, end the turn here. And see what happens. Because during the end turn, okay, um... Yeah, decline. There's a chance that some of our members of government will gain good or bad traits and um, we need them to gain good ones and not gain bad ones because essentially our government is one of the most important aspects to this blitz because there are some regions that will are going to revolt we can't stop that but there are some regions that we can stop okay we didn't get anything happen there that was good or bad one way for me just whatever don't worry about that right now Minus four. I've been able to see it go down to like minus three or two before. So what we'll do is we'll quick load. We'll go back to the end of the, the previous turn. And we'll try again. And see if we get better luck. Because all you gotta do is quick save. And then quick load. And it, it rolls the dice again. Basically everything's gonna turn out pretty much exactly the same. See? Everything happens in, in the exact same way. But... Certain um, ancillaries could show up, or ancillaries, I, I can't remember how it's pronounced. Only thing is, uh, you know, each time you do this, it takes two minutes. Or a minute, whatever. Okay, so this time we got, we got some gained. This guy here, William the Third, that's the king. Gained uh, a pet hermit. Alright. And he has improved the public order. To be honest, it's too hard to try and get more than one out of these guys. And to get out king something, it increased the cost of constructing building, but since we're not going to construct anything anyway, it's fine. Happiness is very important for us in this campaign. Also, um, I declared war on Prussia prior to this because they were paying them tribute. That stopped the tribute. And I was able to get a trade agreement with Quebec. Uh, Quebec. Looks like some of the regions are being raided. That's fine. So a lot of letters of demand. So we're going to accept it th this time. So we gained about, you know, I don't know, a lot of money during the end turn, about 8,000. Our income's actually increased because um, things have managed to be repaired. These things here increase tax rate by a lot. Um, good, we trained some units here, got some units there. Just make sure everything happened according to plan or else we'll reload back to the, the beginning of the next next turn. Now, looking at this, I can still get that public order problems down lower because we can kick out someone of government. The one, the person I'm looking at primarily is this guy here. Uh, because he has got, he also reduces our global tax income. He's upright, so it lowers happiness to the nobility. So we can kick him out to get somebody that, that that doesn't do anything for him because he's not even a treasurer. Um, someone that could be, for one thing, maybe have more stars in justice 
and maybe have, I don't know, maybe status quo. Because that's, we don't have a lower class. We're, we have nobility and we have middle class. So this, that minus lower class shit, that completely doesn't matter. Because we don't have a lower class. Alright, so let's see here. Good, that's happened exactly as I wanted. So we don't need to fight them. I remember in my previous blitz, we fought them head on. Or maybe they attacked Moose Factory, I can't remember. Um, yes, but now we can just avoid them. You see, we can't quite reach the settlement, but, you know, we can just use the movement bug, so it's not really a big deal. Um, I exempted this region from taxation because it doesn't make enough money anyway. Doesn't matter. Still get the tradable goods out there. These guys over here are fine. We've got our troops over here. Pirates in the way there. That's fine because what I'm planning on doing is moving all these guys together. Attacking the pirates here and landing there. Which means we'll need to hire a new general. But that's fine. We'll probably need to hire a lot of generals in this area. Down here, all of these guys are all good to go. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I replenish any of these units here during the end turn? Well, I could have, but considering we lost so few, I figured let's just keep it the way it is now. I'll probably end up replenishing them at the end of this turn, um, because the thing is it takes two turns to do it. And like I said, they're, they're in good shape for now. So we'll keep that going. This guy will be able to make it down here and he'll be our low movement point, dude. We need to land here, go and pick up the artillery bit of a pain in the ass to go all the way back up here and then come back down to fight Italy but that's kind of what we need to do we need to take out Spain this turn I don't know or we could get take out you know here but I don't know I had to plan to take out Italy because if we take out Spain then these regions will go rebel well that one will and so will this it'll be much easier to take at that point Alright, now I'm just going to take uh, just pause the recording for a moment and plan my next strategic move. I'm going to do this first, but I need to know exactly what way is going to be best. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we've moved our, ourselves all the way down to um, Fort Sol de Murray, or whatever it's called. Um, this is the Huron Confederacy, or I call them the Huron Confederacy, but... Huron, Wyandot, whatever. Um, they're on their way to Rupert's Land. One more turn and they'll get there. But we're here now. And um, what I'd I used the movement bug to get here, obviously. And um, hired a couple of generals. Didn't use up all their movement to get down here. But I thought I'd get a couple of extra generals to help with this battle. Because, you know, there's a few forces here. And, you know, we only started off with these two. Now, the thing is, fighting this ban battle manually, surely we can win it. We've got cavalry superiority to some extent. Um... But it would cost us a lot of men. Funny thing is, auto resolve yields a really good result. Oh shit, that is actually the worst I've seen so far. Wait, that was a defeat. That's fine. So we just quick save and quick load. We get a different result. I've seen it go down as low as 109 casualties, which in a big army that's nothing, but that's like a third of our forces here. That's still not what I want. I really want a good result out of this. I mean, I could hire some more generals to make the odds even more in our favor, but I don't necessarily think that's going to reduce our casualties. See, that's all right. So they took a bit of a beating. I mean, that guy there is absolutely fucked. Which is fine. I don't mind if the generals take damage. I have an issue with them taking damage, though. I'll, I'll accept that. So, with that, that faction is destroyed. And we've taken this. It's not even worth taxing, there's, there's nothing here. Like, we could could build the gold here, but we'd, we wouldn't make enough profit. Like, we'd get 24% of that, so we'd need at least four turns of, um, of taxing it. And the campaign will be over by that point, so it's not worth it. Or almost over. Plus, the tax rates are going to keep going downhill. Because, you know, 
administration costs. Alright, so that's done. I'll deal with the rest of them. Now, we could also send them down here to take out... Um, to take out possibly the Iroquois Confederacy. The Iroquois have got three settlements. They declared war on the 13 colonies during the end turn, which sucks. But if we could take them out, I don't think they've got much in each of their settlements, but I don't know for certain. Um, if we could take them out, then this army here will just disappear. Anyway, the next step is to deal with this situation here. Okay, so we've got a similar situation to what we had at the beginning of the last turn, where all of our forces are all over the place. Um, I mean, that's all of our forces from last turn, but we've got some new forces here. So what we need to do is bring them together. We need to take out these pirates here and actually land our guys at Cuba right here, which requires a bit of finagling. All right, so... Taking these cannons, can't do anything but move them there. Now these are the these are the really good cannons. They don't have quite as much firepower as the demi cannons. They've actually got about half the firepower. Actually, let me just check that. Um, Twenty-seven firepower compared to thirty-eight fire, firepower. Yeah, because I think these are these are twelve pounders. Uh, sorry, twenty-four pounders. Yeah, it says there twenty-four pounders. Um, so they're not good at um, knocking down walls, but when you've got unlimited ammunition, all it means is it takes longer. More importantly, these guys can move into you know move when the battle starts, which is very important. All right, so we need to go send them over here. Could hire some more, but I don't know if we'll be coming back here to go come pick them up. You also, okay. Now for this situation. Um, we need somebody who's got just pretty much as low movement as you could possibly get. Or even no movement would be better to put on the boat. Because we're not coming in via the port, because otherwise we'll need to use the movement bug all the way over here. Whereas we can use a different movement bug, which is the, um, um, the, the disembark movement bug, which was the first one I actually discovered. So let me just quick save it. I'll try and explain it. So the movement bug requires... This is sort of similar to the other movement bug. Now, if you if you um, have troops on a boat and you land in a foreign territory or even just your own territory that's not in a port, the troops will lose all of their movement points, or so it seems. Um, but what actually happens is all of their movement points goes down until it hits until one of the units hits zero movement points. Now, if one of the units already in the bot on the ship had no movement points, then nobody else loses movement points. Now, since we're going to need to use the movement points to get back to the point, uh, back to the port, actually, no, wait. yeah, yeah, if we, hang on, we will, no, we can actually get picked up here, because we'll need to use the ships again, but we'll need to use the movement bug for other areas, so, I don't know, I'll, I'll figure it out as we go, we might have to leave someone behind at Cuba. That's fine, but if we're going to do that, we need to hire a new general, and I'll have him use up his movement points. Because I don't want to leave any of these guys behind, they're too important. Even, actually I could probably leave him, he gets plus 5 army campaign movement range, so that's, that's really useful. Could just be for him though. Alright, so what we do, to hire new generals, put them in there. Yeah, we need to hire a new general. Okay, now his movement points are going to go down to his level, but that's okay. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. It's all going to have the same movement points at this point. He just hit, he had a few bonuses because he's got the military surveyor, but I want to keep him. So I want to hire a couple of generals here, while we can, get them at max movement points. Alright. Now, which of these is the crappest? This guy's not too bad. 
All right, so you're you're nothing important. Okay, so everyone else moves into port. Uh, these guys here will also need to move into port. Um, this guy here needs to get picked up. Let me just quick save it because I need to be very careful with how I do things. Uh, this will be the the ship that has no movement points, so we use him to to pick up these guys. Don't have them disembark at the at the um, port because it, it's shorter distance to go from here. Um, then we send them. Everyone goes into port. Just stand out there for now. You go in there. It doesn't take any movement points to disembark them. Like that. Okay, now this guy here. Here's the tricky part. Alright, now we need to use up his movement points all but the smallest sliver of movement point. Now he needs to still have some movement points or else he won't be able to disembark in that area. So I've got to be very careful with what I'm doing here. The less movement points he has left, the more movement points the other guys will have when they disembark. Okay, I've got to be very careful here now. So he's got that much left. A little bit left. What's his name? I need to know his name. His name is... Orval, teach, whatever. Onward. Forward. For crown and country. Nope, I failed that. He didn't have enough movement points. Because we can get him on the boat, but if he has no movement points, he will not disembark. He needs to have some movement points, or else it doesn't work. I'd like him to have less, but that'll do. Not possible, sir. Okay, now then, for the Navy, where's the ship that has the lowest movement points? Is it this one? Is that the sloop that we just hired? Well, let's just go through them and see. Yeah, it's this one here. So this one here needs to run out of movement points. Yes, still ship shape. Yes, Captain. Set sail. Ship's orders, Captain's orders received. Drop. Okay, there we good. And now the entire fleet can join them. How's the public order here going? It's okay, I'll sort that out in time. Alright, then... Which one is it? That one there? Okay, good. Now we just make our way over to... To here. using the movement bug. So now that we've got all of these guys with full movement range, it really should give us, basically, with this amount of movement, if I wanted to, I could probably get all the way over here, this turn, with ease. But the plan here is to take La Habana and Cuba, take out the pirates, land down here. I don't know if I really want to take out United Provinces this turn. So if I go to war with them, let me just have a look. How are they in Europe? They've got all their forces inside their city there, which isn't that big of a deal. But we can't just declare war on them, or else they'll, they'll take this territory from us. I mean, we could t declare war on them, maybe if we come up here, defeat them, but then have to go all the way back down here, and I don't know. Uh, i still got a lot of figuring out to do. Either that, or I can try maybe buy the settlement off them, or maybe do a region swap. Because I don't want to have to go back down here. Either that, or we could just bypass it, like, take the settlement, then leave, go around it, come to, to New Andalusia, and we'll send another force to go get that later down the track. That's always a possibility. Either that, or we do it in reverse order. We come down here and we take all the islands. We don't take all the islands even. We just take Cuba. And we come all the way up to here. 
Which, by the way, we're not taking Cuba just yet. We're going to just take the pirates. We'll uh, finish off Spain first before we take Cuba. Um, come up all the way here and start taking out some of these regions and maybe move our way down here. But this is sort of inefficient. These, these lands here, we don't need to take them right away. But then again, we need to take these lands right away. These are slightly richer. Either way you go about it, it's sort of, it's not really, the American expansion is not really ideal. You don't want to start at the center, because then if you go up one way, then you've got to double back all the way back down. You want to start at one side, and then just just sweep across it all in one go with one army. That's the most efficient. Anyway, I'm going to pause the recording as I move these guys up here, and then plan my next move. Okay, so I've been planning the next move, and it's a bit, bit complicated. Okay, so I thought I'd go into diplomacy and check to see exactly what I could do, and it turns out there's still a few things I can do. Some of them, though, they've, they've definitely got their pros and cons to it, but I think I found the ideal solution. Uh, not uh, solution, but compromise, I suppose, but whatever. All right, first thing I need to do is go to uh, Denmark. And we're going to do a region swap. Iceland for Jamaica which for some reason they counter it was the exact same offer. This is kind of silly because we just took some troops from Jamaica. Now, why did I do this? Because, I mean, the, Jamaica is obviously richer than crappy Iceland. So why did I want this? Well, because Iceland is out of the way. It, in order to dedicate some forces to go over to Iceland, it's just such a pain in the ass. We don't have any intention of going up this way. So by taking it diplomatically, um, it's all under control. And we can easily take this back this turn. Now the downside to this is that I can no longer use this settlement this turn. Um, I'll have to, uh, if I want more artillery, I'll have to wait until turn four, from, from here at least. Um, that being said, you know, this will be able to produce artillery and we'll see what else can. Um, also being said, we've got three loads of artillery here, two mobile artillery. We probably don't need any new artillery at this point in time. What I actually need is probably more infantry. Even then, I don't even think that I need that. I'm just going to need lots of generals, and that's not a problem. So, okay, that's that bit done. The next bit is really a bit... a bit fucked. Um, I'm glad I purchased these units here. So we're going to hire a general firstly. Now, it probably won't make sense, but just bear with me until the end. I'm going to cancel a number of trade agreements. United Province, cancel. Austria, cancel. Marathon Confederacy, cancel. And one more. New Spain, cancel. Now, why did I do that? I'll explain that firstly. I'm about to sell Edinburgh. Edinburgh has two trade routes here. If I sell off Edinburgh, Edinburgh two, I mean, not only two, but like four trade agreements get flung out the window because some of them were going by land. Now, what I've done here is I've maintained the five agreements that I cannot get back after I retake this settlement. Now, Truth be told, I can only really get another trade agreement back with the Marathon Confederacy. They won't ask for anything in return. Now, why not the other ones? Well, I'm going to declare war on the United Provinces, on Austria, and on New Spain this turn. So, therefore, I don't need the trade agreements anyway. Now, with I'm going to sell it to um, the United Provinces because... Actually, let me just see if I can get a price from Austria. I didn't think about this. If I am going to go to war with them anyway, because they're allied with United Provinces, aren't they? Well, I guess it doesn't make any difference. We'll just see how, if I can get a better price from them. I can get 8,000 from... Hang on, let me just save it first. Actually, no. Also, guys, I've got a new minister. Oswald Channing here. He's my new justice minister, and he helps with the um, public order to nobility by an additional two points. So we've almost got it under control now. Next person I'll probably fire is either him. Yeah, he's alright. He just doesn't have any... He only has that that provides public order. Or 
this guy here who doesn't provide any public order and I don't really care about how many stars they have. It's all about public order to stop these revolts. So... That's right, we were going to check to see if Austria will give me a better price. Oh, hang on, let me just see this again. Who's Württemberg, Bavaria? Yeah, we have to kill all of them this turn as well. No, I'd rather stick to the original plan. So, give them this for a basic payment. I tried doing region swapping, but they just won't have it. Um, I'll try 8,600. Okay, a little bit extra than I was expecting, so that's good. Alright, so we're about, we will, we will take that soon. So, I've also changed my plans in regard to what I'm going to do with these guys. What they're going to do firstly, is conquer Cagliari, then they're going to land here, then they're going to Strasbourg. This is, this is the plan at the moment, things can't change. Obviously I had planned to take Italy, and I still do, but just differently. Okay, now... Hold on to your butts for this one. Württemberg, Cologne, Amsterdam, Hanover, Copenhagen, Berlin, Dresden, Prague, Breslau, Preburg, Vienna, Munich, Venice, Milan, Genoa, Turin, Rome, Naples, Sarajevo, Zagreb. That's the plan for this turn. You might think, whoa, that's a fucking load of settlements this for this turn. Yeah, it is. But with those mobile artillery, we just couldn't get it done, especially since we got this much money. And don't forget, I did this kind of shit in the previous blitz, so I know I can do it this time. And the thing is, I did it later in the previous blitz, and that would have made things more difficult because they would have had more time to recruit. This is only turn two. They've had no time to recruit anything. So now's the best time to take them down. Alright, so with that done there, we obviously need to, to do that before we go after uh, the Spanish settlements there. Because that, if we take out Spain in Europe, then that'll turn rebel, meaning it'll be a lot easier to control that region. I won't have to exempt it from taxation quite as much. Alright then, I'm just seeing what else I could do. Now, when we declare war on Denmark, it'll also bring Russia into it. So I might just pause the recording again and just see if I can squeeze just a little bit out of diplomacy. If not, then we'll make our way to Cagliari and... Um, oh, that, hang on. We better, we better deal with this first because I need those trade agreements back. See, if we have a look here, there's no trade ports. So uh, I'll just see if there's anything else I can do with diplomacy.